and slurp, blurp and slurp. Hello, friends. Wait, baby, I'm not ready yet. I want to say hi to our friends. Action. Hello, friends. <laughs> Welcome to another video. Hello, guys. Um, we want to talk to you guys about minimalism, minimizing, just the whole process of making your life a little more simple in today's video. But first, I want to talk about this spot a little bit that we've been in for a while now. Um, yeah. There's like cottonwood trees outside, and we were talking about this place blooming recently and being able to see all the beautiful flowers and stuff. But on top of that, these trees are like releasing cotton into the air, or there's like this, it it's looks like, like snow. It's yeah. It's really, really snow pretty. Snow in summer, in summertime, it's really cool. Super enchanting. So I got a little bit of video. I thought it was kind of cool. Kind of, it does this every morning, and it, it just, it adds to the the Garden of Eden feel that this place already has. See our cat. Our cat is laying on our back and it's Slug. taking everything in me to not flip her face off. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. First of all, we want to talk about the fact that minimalism is a, is a personal journey. You know, it's going to mm -hmm. be different for everyone. You don't need to compare what you do or do not want to get rid of to what someone else is doing. Just be very critical with your items and deciding what you want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Things will mean something completely different to you. Things that have no meaning to somebody else will mean the world to you. And certainly don't get rid of those items. Yeah, let's actually talk real you quick. Jump right into that. Yeah. I have this uh, beer. I have this uh, Mexican beer bottle uh, filled with seashells and sand, which is kind of a worthless item. I've had it since I was 19, but this actually holds a lot of really deep sentimental value to me. This is my dad and I, uh, the last day that I ever saw him, I was in Cancun uh, where he lived and we walked on the beach in the morning and drank a beer. Um, that was our style in Mexico, you drink in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and filled the bottle with the, the shells and sand. So this is like something I'll always keep to remember my dad. And yeah. it weighs like five pounds and it has bounced all over the place, but uh, it's just one of those items, you know? My guitar is another one, it's beaten to crap, but uh, I love it, I'll never get rid of that guitar until yeah. I can't play it anymore. We're going to get right into it with our number one tips for minimalism, or not minimalism, minimizing. Um, my number one tip would be that the bigger the item is, the more critically you need to think about whether or not you want to keep it. So we have like a little bin full of smaller I items like adapters and wires and stuff, stuff that we don't use every single day or every single week, but they're, they're going to come in handy, you know, sometime in the next mm -hmm. year. And because they're so small, we don't really feel bad holding on to them. But it's those big items that really take up a lot of space in a small space. We are, This is about 111, 112 square feet in here. Um, and those big items are the ones that you really have to be like, do I need this? Am I going to use this often? If not, even if it's something that you spent a lot of money on, either try to sell it or just give it away. Be a blessing to someone else and get it out of your space because... The more cluttered it is in a small space, the more the energy in there is just going to feel like chaotic and busy. And when you wake up in the morning and you look in your small space and it's like clean and bright and fresh and airy, it's literally inspiring. Like it makes me want to write and read and do yoga and all these things Sorry, just jumped. when it's clean in here. But when it's really cluttery and there's stuff laying around everywhere, I just like, I just, I don't know, I feel bogged down. I feel literally like a weight is on my shoulders if, if there's a lot of stuff. So we just got rid of three carloads full of stuff from this bus. How we had all of that? I don't, I don't know. even know how we put that much in the car. Yeah. Um, What's your number one tip? Cathartic. My number one tip would be to take you know the things that you know you're not going to get rid of. My you know my guitar, laptop, um, just things that you that you that define you that that you love. Things that bring value to your life is really the the key. Take those and set them aside because you know you're not going to get rid of those. Then everything else start to like put into that closet in your house that you don't access very often or a drawer or even just a box if you already live on a bus or something and see how often you access that box and if you find yourself getting into it a lot then maybe take that item out that you find yourself getting like twice a week but if there's find stuff home. in there that you forgot you even had and you look back and you're like oh yeah I forgot then that's a box that goes to Goodwill uh, you right. know, once a month or something like that and I think that's a good way to start it because back to the beginning it is a it is a personal process and minimizing for one person is completely different than minimizing for another person and we're more trying to talk about minimizing for uh, tiny living yeah. so that's like a whole different ball game when you have to minimize because your house is only a couple hundred square feet now I know life in a bus they're in the process of moving out of their house right now and I said something in the comments back that like my one piece of advice would be to like be very liberal with what you're gonna get rid of like I know it's hard to get rid of stuff 
but the last thing you want is kind of what we did, which is we weren't able to get rid of enough stuff when we first moved into the bus. We, you know, we went from a thousand square foot apartment to a hundred square feet and we brought way too much stuff. And that's once we lowered the bed and kind of reconfigured the space, we didn't have as much storage. So we, we were forced to get rid of a lot of stuff and you don't want to, you know, we've been living in the bus almost a full year now and you don't want to have to do this minimizing process a million times. You can and you probably will but the more you can just like hit it hard the first time the better less stress yeah. for you in the future absolutely that's the worst one ripping the band-aid off with the initial the initial getting rid of everything that's that's the worst and, and actually it, it becomes cathartic so then the, the other ones are nice and yes. therapeutic okay we, we wrote everything down with this little journal so we're gonna keep moving through the list do you want to go next I'd say well you had a good idea with the share thing so I guess yeah the big thing with sharing is Think about you know yourself when you were a child and sharing your toys and your items with your friends. As we get older, we somehow get disconnected from that mentality, and I think living in like a consumerist Western Western world, um, money rules all, yeah. yeah, exactly. Money rules all, and possessions rule all. Not really, but that's what people think. That's what society like, right? You know, praises. Um, but don't be afraid to share items with your friends. Share dresses with your girlfriends. Share Tools. lawn mowers. Yeah. Good one with your neighbors, like create a community aspect where everyone, not everyone has to have each individual item just sitting in their garage or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be, but share to people, share with people, yeah. share to people, share to people, share to people. I think one of the biggest things that helped me get through it was looking at the actual value of an item and removing the monetary value from it, removing how much I paid for it and instead thinking how much it really means to me. And, and, and you could revalue something, obviously turn it back into money. Um, if you find that you don't really need it, you know, right. But that also takes us to our next point, which is that minimalism for us really changed the value of a dollar for us. So you have, you have a good analogy. Why don't you start with that about your time and minimalism and Well, money. because what do you work for? I mean, when you ask yourself that, like, why do I go to work every day? And you, you say, well, obviously money. I have to pay my rent, or I have to pay my mortgage, the car payment, insurance, Netflix, your Hulu, Amazon, all that stuff. Yeah. And then on top of that, People go shopping all the time and buy all these random things. Stuff, yeah. And so, out of boredom a lot of times. Uh, really, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm guilty of that too. I used to be an Amazonaholic. I would just buy so much stuff and have it shipped Amazon to my house. Amazon Prime, baby. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the more you buy, the more you own, the more you have to work for it. Yeah. And that literally is your time. So, I mean, when you, when you break it down like that, you know, items or money is time. Yeah. And your time is your life. So the less you buy, the less the time you're going to have live. to work. Yeah, exactly. The less items you feel like you need to buy, the less, sorry, big trucks come by. Um, the less you buy, the less you're going to feel like two semis crossing each other. The less you buy, the more you're going to feel like you have more time because you don't have to constantly trade over your time for a dollar to trade the dollar over for an item. Um, so to us, when we bring something on the bus, when we buy an item, um, like we got this, we got this laptop with some of the money from the wedding and that's something that we really critically needed. Like the only reason we bought the laptop is because we needed it. We got one other thing, which was but a little... also I was considering how much it changed the value of a dollar for us. We didn't just go out and buy that laptop at Best yeah. Buy. We shopped around all day and we got that laptop from a pawn shop. Yeah. Um, so it's not like, you know, I mean, that, that really starts to change too, is you, you, you try you to look stretch for dollars yeah, it's like you as much as possible. Yeah. Be part of the cycle that mm -hmm. you're in of, reusing and exchanging stuff. stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so really every every time we bring something into the bus, it's something that we've like had three conversations about and we've been thinking about buying it for weeks prior to to see like do we really need it? You know what I mean? Like I used to always buy things and then come home and be like, "What the hell? Why did I get this?" and then go return it the next day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the whole mentality which you know maybe this is a little stark, maybe it's a little dramatic in some case, but you come into this earth alone and you leave this earth alone. Mm -hmm. And so what I mean, you can do without, whoa. Flying cats here yep. on the bus. One of my, I think the anthem for me of minimalism is this song. It's, a, it's like a bluegrass folky song by this band called Wookie Foot. And it's called um, Just Visiting, because it's talking about how we're all just visiting here. And there's a few really clever lines like you, 
you know, there won't be any pockets on the pants you're wearing the day you die. And you never see a, a hearse with a trailer hitch. That's mm -hmm. my personal favorite. And it's just like these little things that just make you think like, wow, yeah, this what's the point matter. of having all this stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. obviously you, you tuned into a minimalism video for a reason. We assume you might have already minimized. You're looking into it. You know, you're, you're in the process. So hopefully these were things that could help you. Uh, the beautiful, amazing thing about tiny living and minimizing is you get all your time back. And I guess that brings me into the little tiny bit of vlogging that we have in this video. Yeah. Um, because we, one of the, the coolest thing is having the flexibility of time. Uh, for example, my best friends, Eric and Janie called us like three days ago and they were like 20 minutes from where we were parked and said, Hey, come get breakfast with us. And we were able to just be like, yeah, okay, let's go. And then just today we met up with, um, her best, my friend, best Ashley friends, Ashley and, and Shelby. Shelby. Yeah. Just to go on a hike. And it's like, let's go on a hike kind of spur of the moment. And because we don't have to work so much and like constantly, I don't know, say no to fun things that we want to do. Yeah. Because we have to work, we get to go do things kind of on a whim and really live our lives and spend time with people and get out in nature and not feel bad about it. Not feel like, oh man, gotta get back yeah. to the office. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that was really nice. Being able to go on that hike today it was beautiful. It was. It just recharged us. It's so green out here right now, and we are so happy to just be alive, be here, be sharing this message with you guys. If you're feeling and you guys to out, share with. If you're feeling flooped out, go sit next to a tree or something. Yeah. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Like it just it just makes you feel alive. Um, so yeah. Sorry. Keena's been jumping all over the bus this entire video, so I'm sure you've heard a bunch of thuds. Tabby's been laying right here, like just a cutie. like a little angel. A little yeah, um, and thank you, Michael Peel, for checking on us. Here's your new video, drop them yes. today. Yes. <laughs> Sorry well, about that wait. We're gonna hit it, we're gonna edit this video up and go spend some time with family, get, yep. up, get out into nature. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Make sure if you wanna get notifications for every video, video, every video, hit the little notification bell. The bell. Um, what else? Video what else? Bell. Oh, thank you so much to everyone that's been going to livingzeal.com and buying the how to build your conversion guide, um, Chad's life alternative. Oh my gosh, book. that comment the other day, this guy, I forgot his name. Oh I'll man, it touched my heart that you read my book and, and enjoyed it so much and wanted me to recommend other books like it. I think the closest one to my story is a book called Into the Wild. Barry Roach. Barry, thank you, Barry. Mm -hmm. Check out Into the Wild if you haven't read that one already. And I'm in the process of lots of big semis. Now Kina lays down. Um, I'm in the process of writing my book, so I'm really excited about that. I really appreciate all the advice and you know comments you guys have been sending me on Facebook. Um, so yeah, we're excited. So excited. Oh, if you want to become a patron, click the link below. We just <laughs> released another patron-only video um, that was really fun. It was like a behind-the-scenes Boulder video. Maybe we'll put in a little mm -hmm. clip of that right now. And anything else? Don't forget to click our links before you go to Amazon if you want to support us for free. Mm, I, nothing else. No. That's all. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. <laughs>